Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Davida with Medium of the Light Tarot. As you guys can hear, it is um, 4th of July and people in my neighborhood are lighting it up. So um, I apologize now, but I thought that this says, since this is a family oriented holiday, that it would be a great time for your loved ones to come through. So I believe this is um, pick a card messages from your deceased loved ones, number 15. So um, go ahead and go to the description box and see which one that you want to pick and you know, whichever one resonates the best with you. So I'm going to start off with number one. So thank you for joining me today and let's get started. All right, so this is number one. Divine Consciousness, Ten of Earth, the Star card, the Detoxification card, Go the Distance, Peace of Mind, Be true to your heart. You are not, you are never alone. It is not your fault. Don't back down. Let's see. Choose a new direction. Crystal clear intuition or intentions. Surrender denial. And polar bear ancestors all right and the ones that you can't see I'll I'll bring them up because I think um, you know visuals are very important for a lot of people so let's see who is coming through for number one this fourth of a fourth of July edition This is a young man, uh, he says around 18. Um, he, he points this out to me first. It says, um, it is not your fault. What I'm hearing from him is he's saying that he was a difficult child from the get-go that he had some kind of a chemical imbalance in his brain that he really he's saying he really made it hard on everyone and he's saying he got to come through on the fourth of july because he liked fire he actually he's telling me he negotiated with other deceased um, souls to skip to this day He's telling me that he's very thankful for his ancestors because when he passed, his ancestors were there waiting for him. And he wants to reiterate to you that you're never alone. He's like, even when you think you're alone, he's like, I thought I was alone when I was here in the physical. I thought I was alone all the time. That's why I did stupid things. I was trying to get people to... Um, connect with me on the level that I'm used to being connected with and um, he's saying that he he never really got used to the the physicality of this world he never got used to it it was never something that was easy for him and you knew that you know even as a young child you knew that he he wasn't functioning correctly as it were um let's see he 
He says he wants you to be true to your heart, that you kind of shut down after he passed because his whole time growing up was very difficult. It was very difficult for you. It was this constant watching over your shoulder, you know, looking back to make sure he wasn't doing anything stupid. And these are his words, not mine. Um, he said he was just a constant troublemaker. You know, and when he was really young, you were like, um, you would sing that, star, that song, something about him being a star. It was like he was the star of your world. And he really appreciates what you gave him, what you tried to come forth with him. And he was sorry that he couldn't be more forthcoming. He said that he had a very happy family life, even though he was the one who caused all the chaos. All of it. He says he wants you to find peace of mind now. That he really... He taxed you in every way possible. He's saying that he wants you to let go of the denial. He says, accept people and situations exactly as they are without denying the difficulties. Then you can see things clearly and make the best decisions. Because you, he's saying that you loved him so much that you were willing to go into denial so you could, you know, explain to yourself and others why his craziness was doable or acceptable. He's also saying that he wants you to detoxify. Like, when he was alive, he taxed you so much mentally, physically, financially, like all of the toxifications you can think of, he was, he did it. And he wants you to take time to de detoxify all those parts of your life. He said, and he doesn't want you to think that this was all for nothing. He said, this was a great lesson for both of us. We con we contracted for, you know, me to be this total screw up, mess up. And so you could be the caregiver. You could learn how to give, receive, even though he said he, he rarely gave to you. Only when he needed you to give him something. And he apologizes for that. He says he's, you know, him, when he looked, Pat, when he looked over his life, he it was sad for him to see, even though you guys signed up for this, to grow for the both of you. He wants you to know that there, when you guys came into this life together, when you contracted to experience these, what he uses as horrors, that you came in with crystal clear intentions. This is the Archangel Michael. It says, be clear about what you desire and focus upon, uh, focus upon it with unwavering faith. And he's like, and that's exactly what you did with me. He was like, you gave me every opportunity to choose a new direction. And his, his contractual agreement was that you know, yeah, he could have changed things if he wanted to, but it was a short-term thing where he knew he wasn't unconsciously or on a soul level that he wasn't going to remain here forever. But he doesn't want you to think it's your fault. And he wants you now to like, because you're going, you're going into this new phase in your life where you are getting to, you know, go the distance for yourself. And he was like, when I was alive, it was all about me. Your life was all about me. And he wants you to, you know, go the distance for yourself. Move forward and do your own healing. Do your detoxification. Become your own star. 
And then there's the Ten of Earth here, which is the Ten of Pentacles, a very happy family, financial security, finding magic in the little things in life. This is what he wants for you. This is what you are capable of achieving in this life. He said that the two of you worked off some karma together because you've been together before. And he's saying that he, he's learning so much, um, being in the non-physical realm and he said he just, you know, he put you through hell and he's, He's sorry for that, but he's not sorry because it was a part of the agreement that the two of you made. So it was mutually beneficial for the two of you. And there's divine consciousness here. He was say, he's saying by experiencing, and it's this one, by experiencing this tough time that you guys experienced together, that it's going to, it's raised your consciousness, it's raised his consciousness, vibrationally and it has benefited both of you even though at the moment you cannot see it and he is just glimpsing you know being on the non-physical side of what it's going to mean for his growth and this is don't back down stand up for what you believe is right and he says you always did that you always stood up for what you thought was right. And you were trying to constantly have him understand right and wrong. But he couldn't. He couldn't understand it because his, there was something wrong with his brain chemistry where he could not. He was a very destructive child and a destructive young man. He wants you to know that he loves you and that he is excited to see you once again. He says that he will come um, to you in dreams. He will, <sighs> what I'm hearing is interesting. He says, I will make this worthwhile to you. So he's saying, as we move along in this, um, the storyline between the two of us, you will come to understand the divine order that was within the chaos. I hope that that was helpful. All right. And he says, of course, that he loves you. Please leave me a like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment on how this resonated with you. And, you know, I always love hearing how it resonates with people. So now <clears throat> we are going to start on number two all right limitlessness or limitless five of waters which is five of cups the four of cups the magic of nature truth be told Thank you. Contemplation. I am here helping you. Life is a series of choices. Choose love. That's a good one. Inner wisdom. Be assertive. You know what to do. Surrender your fear of change. And honeybee, which is reciprocity. Let's see what this energy has to say here. So I'm getting that this is a man in his 30s. Um... He's saying he, he like died from something sudden with like the chest or the heart area. It'd be like a heart attack. 
it was something that said it was sudden it was unforeseen like you know here today gone tomorrow sort of a thing he's drawing my attention first to this um, five of water here which is the five of cups it says things must here, let me get closer because glasses are not doing it it says things not turning out the way you hoped not seeing the positive in a situation and crying over spilt milk. And it's interesting because I had kind of picked up that this is some kind of a, like a love connection. And in this card, there's the two of cups and then the three are scattered here underwater. He was saying, he's saying on the physical realm, um, you and him, you know, would have both perceived that, wow, this was not how I thought this was going to turn out. I thought we were going to have a lot more time together. Um, and he's saying because of that, and not only because of that, but because of that, he is here helping you. He's trying to help you transition from him being here to not being here. He's saying that he, um, he's sorry that you have to raise the kids alone. He's saying this is far too soon to mention this, but he wants to get it out right away that later on down the road, when you feel open to love again, that he wants you to allow someone in and you're going to know when he agrees with you, um, through dreams, um, asking questions, you know, like, is this the right person? Do you feel good about this, this person that I'm letting into my life? And to say, ask for signs and he will give them to you. He said, he's saying that you guys really enjoyed nature together and that you guys would joke about, um, fairies and you believed in them more than he did. And he's telling me that he's like, do you know that fairies are actually real? And I'm like, yeah, I know that, but he's wanting you to know that. Cause you guys would kind of joke around it and it wasn't like you were totally into it, but you had more confidence in it, in it or in them than he did. And he wants to thank you for all the beautiful time that you guys spent together. And he's saying, by no means is this the end. This is not the end. So don't even think about it though. It is the end in this physical reality. He says that you have kind of shut down your will and you're doing things, you're doing things out of continuing to keep your children, your guys' children's life running. Um, and he wants you to know that he wants you to work on your, your will to live. Um, he wants you to continue to feel your feelings about this. And he really wants you to keep, you know, the love that you guys had intact. And he's like, I know it's really hard when, you know, it seems that all is lost. And maybe there's, you know, flamingos that have something, some significance for you. Or maybe Florida is what I'm hearing. He's like, but I don't want you to put your head in the sand about this. I want you to move forward into a strong and healthy situation. He goes, because you know what to do. But right now, you don't see the light. You don't see it. It's like you're, you're like I said, you're half shut down. You're not really living. You're living for your children and pretending like life goes on. But for you, life has stopped. So it kind of goes into this um, surrender your fear of change. 
says the universe is reminding you that you are cared for always. Whether you're afraid of a change in your job, your health, or a relationship. If you fear aging or death, repeat the affirmation, I have the faith that all is well. I don't know if he called you honey, but there is this card of, it says, it's very, in really small writing, it says a reciprocity. So you guys were very good at giving and taking with each other. <laughs> he's, he's saying that he was a very funny person and that you guys would laugh all the time. And of course, I am uh, recording this on the 4th of July, and he says that he was what he would consider to be a grill master. Just, you know, he's tooting his own horn. He said, truth be told, and he's like, you already knew this, but you were the love of his life, and you always knew somehow to get him to open his heart. And he thanks you for that. Um, let's see. Which one have I had not? So this contemplation. He wants you to contemplate about the mysteries of life and how, because now he's over on the other side, that how you can communicate with him. You know, and he's like, I was her her solid ground and you kind of feel like you lost your ground your you know your footing he's like but you haven't sorry I'm about to sneeze Ooh. maybe he was a sneezer who knows I usually don't sneeze during readings but anyway um interesting because right here in this one it says you know what to do and then in this one from another deck, it says, you know what to do. Trust your inner wisdom and take the appropriate action without delay. So this is when you start questioning yourself, he's reminding you that you know what to do. And then here it says the same thing. You know what to do. So he's like, don't question it. Know that you know. Because he's there with you. He's like, I'm here helping you says life is a series of choices choose love and at the, from the beginning of the message when he said you know when the time is right and you are wanting to let someone back into your life into your romantic life he's there for you he knows that you deserve to be continue to be loved in this 3d reality he applauds you for the difficulty of the situation Know that he did have to go and that you have all the tools, the skills, and the knowledge to move forward in this situation in a happy and healthy way. He's like, don't ever think that I'm not next to you because he's saying, honey, I am. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you being here. Please um, leave me a like, share, and subscribe and let me know how this resonates with you. And we will go forward from there. All right, so now we're going to do number three. Sorry. Self-esteem. Knight of Water. Seven of Wands with the Dinosaur. You got some mythical creatures here. The unicorn with keep, what does that say? Kick up your heels, time to go. Summer, keep your dreams alive. Tears cleanse the soul, which they most definitely do. I have no more earthly worries. Go outside. Unlikely. A victory. The sea otter, which is transformation. And surrender the habit of people pleasing. So let me tune into this energy here.
All right, so I'm getting that this is It's interesting. It's a it's a 13 year old is what I'm getting. And usually I don't get a whole lot of like ages, but tonight it's all about um exact ages. So this is at first it came through as a boy. And then it switches to a girl. This was a young man who had a lot of feminine qualities to him. But he's, he's telling me, you know, he wanted to be a girl. He wanted to be... He wanted to make that transition. He, she, they, however you want to approach it, was saying that he wanted to do this, but he got cancer. Oddly enough of um, like lower intestinal stuff. It's interesting. It's almost like he's, he's saying that he had like female parts inside of him. And that was the part that, because um, he was born... He was born with um, the different parts, whatever that means. I don't know. I mean, you can imagine. He was saying in life that because of this situation, of course, not the cancer, but that this greatly affected his self-esteem. You know, and with this night of water, the night of cups, it says emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and um, contemplative. Falling in love our wedding proposal, the need to balance emotions, an invitation to a social event. He's saying that he was constantly in his emotions. He was so torn up about this that he actually, unbeknownst to him, he created this cancer. Because he's saying he was never meant to move into a longer life than he had. And he's looking and he goes, isn't that strange? In an in um, inquisitive way. He said that he took his last breaths in the summer. And he wants to thank you for all of the... Uh, the kind words, the encouragement, the, the love and support that you gave him unconditionally. And you were always trying to, you know, tell him, like, keep your dreams alive. You can do this... And he's also saying now he wants you to keep your dreams alive. To move forward with your personal dreams because his dreams became your dreams and you let them go. Your dreams. Because he was always in emotions, he was crying a lot. And he's saying he wants to remind you, excuse me, <coughs> that it is the 4th of July here. So excuse the, um, the 4th of July sounds. He wants you to remind, he wants to remind you that he was very emotional. He wants you to know that, you know, tears do cleanse the soul, that he wants you to cry more. He wants you to feel more because you are guarding, uh, against him. Well, you're guarding against your feelings. And he wants you to stop trying to be so defensive about it. It's like you're fighting yourself constantly at every turn. And he's also telling me that nobody really knew what struggles he was having. It was a very private family thing. Like he didn't want to share it. He wasn't ready to share it. And he says... You know, he wasn't meant to stay, but that kind of did cause some of the the toxicity to grow within him and cause the cancer. But he's like, not for one minute do I want you to think that it would have been different any other way. He's like, everything unfolded exactly the way it was supposed to unfold. He says that now he can kick up his heels. Like, now that he's... On the other side, meh, these don't want to come up. 
that thing things are as magical and amazing as he thought they that he had remembered they were. Maybe he was in the unicorns as well. But he's he's reiterating here, it was time for him to go. It was time for him to move on to the next phase. He said he was it was never intended for him to stay for very long. He said he's got too much work to do. And he's like, I have no more earthly worries. He said, I have victory. It says, the Archangel Sandalphon, your prayers have been heard and answered. Have faith. And he wants you to know that you can have victory too. He wants you to go outside and, you know, put your feet in the grass, feel the dirt. Because that he's saying that's how you can connect with him more. That he was very much into... Um, I'm hearing he said the same thing about he's a, a tree hugger, you know, like a hippie kid. He says that you're asking him a question all the time. And I don't know what the question is, but he says it's unlikely. Ow. He's saying that you're asking if, if you would have approached things different, if things would have been different <clears throat> with him. And he's like, no, it's unlikely. He doesn't want you to even worry about it. It's almost like it's a non-issue for him. He says that he's, he has transformed. He has become the thing that he didn't remember that he was. And he says that he wants, because he was, but he wants you to stop being a people pleaser. It says, speak your needs and be true to yourself. Focus on your own happiness instead of always trying to make others happy. He's proud of you. He wants you to know that he is there for you and that you, and he's telling me, He's like, and you will see me when you see these sun, when you see sunflowers, you'll know it's me saying hi, mom. All right. I hope that that was helpful. Please leave me a like, share, and subscribe. He says that he's very pleased that you um, took the time and effort and the energy to find this and actually listen to it. He's like, I, I know that it took you a lot to even be open to this. So he appreciates it. All right. All right, so we're gonna move on to number four. So this is deceased loved ones messages. So there is spiritual awaken awareness, the um, eight of cups. God, apparently I'm dead now. Well, anyway, no pun intended. Uh -uh. So <laughs> there's the eight of pentacles, which is the eight of earth, the magician. Cause this was one that I'd gotten that asked for two cards from the same. And this one's the magician. There is the sun card. Stand your ground, the fates, confidence, illumination. I wish I had told you more often how much I love you. Believe in yourself. You can do it. Home. Reconsider. Courage. Inner, surrender to inner peace and dog, which is companionship. This is a very nurturing spread. And she's telling me I'm a mom. This is a mom spread. Okay. 
<clears throat> she says she wants to start off by saying that she's so very, very proud of you. She is very glad that you have been able to stand your ground and be strong in yourself. And she hears you say, what would my mom do? What would my mom do in this situation? And you have, you have really stepped up in, in your own power. She says that you are creating your own happy life. And she's very, very proud of you. She's very pleased on how you're, um, you're becoming spiritually aware. And through her passing, you've been able to communicate with her. Um, you have communicate, communicative dreams with her. You've gained more confidence. Like she is just like, oh, you know, my child is the bee's knees and I'm going to tell you all uh, about it. And she's talking about, you know, she's had illumination since she has passed. And so have you. It's been like a twofold situation for the two of you. She's saying this was faded. Like this was in the stars. Her passing and your expansion. And she's like, don't think I haven't expanded because, honey, I have expanded more than I can talk about. And she, she wants to say how glad and how proud she is, how much courage you've come forth. Because you, it was like you were being, um, confronted by some older adults who thought they knew better or knew what was best for you. And I feel like when she passed, you were of the age where you could make your own decisions to a certain degree, maybe like 18, you know, something like that. And they thought they knew best about, you know, how the money from her would be spent or how it would be distributed. And you were very strong about it. You had the confidence that you needed to go, no, I really think my mom want, would want this. And your logic made them stop and go, okay, I can't argue with that. Even though there was times when you thought they were going to try to bulldoze you. She's, she's saying here with this companionship and dog that... Both of you were deep animal lovers and that you both have, you both had conversations. Sorry, it's the 4th of July. So there's lots of fireworks going on, um, here in America, of course, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. What were you saying? Oh, that you guys had communications together about how you felt about animals and how you thought they could understand more than people gave them credit for. She says that she feels like she was a pretty loving person, but she wishes she told you even more how much she loved you, even though she's laughing and she's saying, Oh, and then they're going to say, Oh my God, she told us all the time how much she loved us. And I'm assuming you have other siblings by that comment. It says, believe in yourself, you can do this. And she said that was her mantra while you guys were growing up. You know, like, you can do whatever you want. You can be whomever you want. Um, she says that she, towards the end, she was, she didn't have a whole lot of peace. But she's saying now she has a lot of inner peace. It says, cultivate inner peace on a daily basis. In quiet, meditative moments, focus on the stillness within and enjoy this inner refuge. Others will feel your good vibes too, and your life will flow more easily. And I'm here saying that you might even have picked up the practice of meditation or your version of meditation or prayer. She's saying something about you're thinking about school or some kind of schooling. And she wants you to reconsider. She wants you to follow your, um, your true calling, your spiritual calling, 
your highest calling. Don't get sucked in by money, she says. Money is not everything. And she's like, especially um, over there. You know, like, go for the thing that you can, you can take with you when you go as spiritual knowledge. You know, like, finance, per se. You're not really going to get to take that with you. I mean, yeah, numbers, they seem to be pretty universal. But she says, but you can create whatever you want. You are the magician. And this, for this eight of um, earth here, is saying skilled work is rewarded. Learning all... Here, wait, I can't read it. Learning all there is to know about a topic. Going back to school. Oh my gosh, that is so hilarious. Because did we or did we not just mention this? So, so when she's talking about reconsider, make sure you're following your heart's calling when you decide to go back to school. Wow, she really drove that one home, didn't she? It says, believe in yourself. You can do this. She wants to, you know, to talk about this with the schooling. And she's saying with this um, home, it says, your household situation is improving either through the move or a healthy change in occupants. And she's saying this has something to do with the people who thought they knew best for you. She just wants to reiterate how happy she is how you've ex about how you've expanded, what you've done with yourself, how you've taken this situation and truly made some amazing lemonade. So she says she loves you more than you'll ever know, but she says you probably know. And she's like, you know, tell your siblings that I'm here, pass this video on to them. And thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was helpful. Please leave me a like, share, and subscribe. Um, I always like to hear how this resonates with you guys. And I will see you guys next time on Medium of the Light Tarot. Thank you. Bye-bye.